It may seem absurd, but the lethal gas that caused the deaths of millions of people was actually invented by a Jewish person. Yes, the father of Zyklon B, the lethal gas that we are all familiar with, was indeed the chemist Fritz Haber, a German Jew. Hi, I'm Dina, I'm a chemist. And today I want to talk to you about how Zyklon B worked and the story behind this chemical compound, which at Auschwitz alone caused the death of more than one million Jews. Let's talk about Zyklon B. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Both Zyklon B and its creator Haber have two sides to them. On the one hand, Haber was a genius in chemistry who revolutionized agriculture and increased crop yields by introducing large-scale fertilizer production. It was all thanks to the discovery of a method that practically synthesized ammonia, a fundamental component of fertilizers, from the air. It seemed like a miracle, described as turning air into bread, and in 1918 he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. On the other hand, however, Haber was also a great advocate of chemical warfare. During the First World War, in fact, hoping to favor Germany's victory, he developed various chemical weapons, including mustard gas, the terrible gas that devastates the skin and in just minutes leads to death. Between the First and Second World Wars, Haber worked in the research laboratories of the Institute of Physics and Electrochemistry in Berlin, developing Zyklon A, namely the first version of the compound. Despite Haber's enthusiasm for chemical weapons, it was an insecticide, so not necessarily a chemical weapon. However, Haber, as a Jewish person, was later forced to leave Germany and died while fleeing the country. After his death, the German chemical company IG Farben, which held the patent for the compound, optimized the formula of this gas to produce a more effective version, Zyklon B. So the B means that it's the second version. It was initially used to exterminate lice and prevent typhus epidemics, but after the final solution was put into action, Zyklon B became one of the Nazis' most often used tools to exterminate millions of Jews, including, this is a very sad story, the relatives of Fritz Haber. Think about it. Only 5 kilograms were needed to kill between 1,000 and 2,000 people, all in a matter of minutes. But how did Zyklon B work? The principal component of Zyklon B is an acid made up of hydrogen, carbon and nitrogen, called hydrocyanic acid or prussic acid. It is a gas at room temperature, but to be transported from the company that produced it to the concentration camps, it had to be stored inside wood dust or a powder composed mainly of silica. So a support substance was impregnated with it. When this powder was deposited inside the gas chambers, hydrocyanic acid was released from the wood or silica support substance that had absorbed it and started to poison the people who inhaled it. Just imagine, initially, when Zyklon B was used as a pesticide, it also contained an irritant agent. This served as a kind of an alarm bell which could warn and save the lives of the operators who were using it if they accidentally started inhaling it. When Zyklon B began to be used in the gas chambers, the Nazis ordered the manufacturer, IG Farben, to remove this irritant agent because it slowed down the effect of the poison. Obviously, we all know that all poisons can have a lethal effect, but what actually happens to your body when you inhale hydrogen cyanide? Well, in the case of Zyklon B, it would quickly enter the bloodstream through the lungs. Part of the acid then transforms into cyanide, the famous cyanide from Hollywood movies. Once it has entered the circulatory system, cyanide attacks the cells, their mitochondria in particular, causing devastating effects. What's happening? Due to the presence of this cyanide, the cells can no longer absorb the oxygen needed for respiration, so what's essential for all cellular processes. This triggers a sort of vicious cycle in which the cell continues to demand oxygen, but the cyanide remains attached there and there's no way to get rid of it. Without oxygen, the cells are no longer able to function and die, causing the death of the victim due to asphyxia, which, in other words, is a lack of oxygen. Zyklon B has come to symbolize the cold and ruthless lucidity with which the Nazis attempted to carry out their plan for ethnic cleansing. It's sad, but true. While we did it from a scientific point of view, talking to you about this compound is our way of continuing to remember the terrible event that the Holocaust was to understand the extent of the cruelty that the can be unleashed by the tools of science, which in reality should always be used to improve lives rather than destroy them. Guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. As always, I'll see you again here on Geopop Everyday Science. A la prossima!